Hey everybody, welcome back to Snorkel.TV. Carl Schuf here, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to create an interactive map using Flash without any action script. This screencast is really focused at you people who are sweating there, googling how to build a Flash map. Um, you're the guy who uh, promised the client you'd build one of these things, and you have no idea what you're doing. Well. I'm here to save you. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this. It might not be the most practical, scalable way, but a monkey could do this. So let's take a look at the finished product, shall we? I'm just going to export real quick our interactive map. And here we have, you know, a nice looking map of the Waynesboro Mall down in Virginia. And whenever you roll over a store, you'll see that its name pops up on the bottom left of the screen and all the names show up in the right places. Uh, you got Camp Out, you got Chandler's Chandeliers. Try to say that fast twice. Or slow. Heck, try to spell it once. Oh, where was I? Um, yeah, so we roll over all these things and you'll see that their names come up. All right, so what we're gonna do is start off in my start file and you know, basically our assumptions are, you know, something about creating very basic shapes. Um, and on the stage, we have a series of simple shapes. And what we need to do is convert these into button symbols so that they will be interactive elements and they will respond to when I roll over them with my mouse. So I'm only going to be focusing on building the bottom three because it'll be easy to see them on the screen. So I'm just going to select this first shape here. And I'm going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol, and this one's going to be called, what, Guns Plus. And we want to be very careful that we make sure that it is a button symbol. And this will instantly tell Flash that it should respond to mouse events, like when you roll over it or press down. I'm going to hit OK. All right. And now we'll see in my library over here on the right, we have the guns plus button symbol. And if I go to edit that symbol by double clicking on it, um, you'll see that we have our original red shape that I drew. And we also have our four frames for up, over, down, and hit. I'm just going to go to the over frame. And by hitting F6, I'm going to get a new keyframe. And in that keyframe, I'm going to take this color this shape and after I've selected it we're just going to change its color to be this orange the third one in from the right and there we go so by just doing that I can now test my movie do a control test movie generates my swift and notice now when I roll over all those other shapes nothing happens but as soon as I roll over guns plus it turns orange when I roll off of it it goes back to red so it can change its appearance just when the mouse rolls over it. And again, no programming. Dead easy. I'm going to do the same thing for Spatula City over here. So I'm going to select this shape. And we're going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol again. And we are going to make this into a button. And this is going to be Spatula City. And some of you should be laughing right now. Hit OK and we're just going to double click on that symbol and we'll see in that symbols timeline of spatula city we have the overstate by hitting f6 again i can have a keyframe which will allow me to take that shape and change its color and a quick export and we'll see that now when i roll over it it will turn orange so both of these sim objects are now interactive button symbols and the next thing we want to do is make sure that each store's name shows up in the lower left with the phone number when we roll over its button. So we'll close the Swift. And I want to point out that on the stage here, um, store info contains this phone number and name. Uh, when I test my Swift, obviously that stuff shows up. Well, what I'm going to do is put the, turn this layer into a guide layer. So let's double click on that layer name and we're going to do guide and hit OK. Now you'll see a little T-square icon shows up next to the uh, layer name. Well that means that when I export my Swift next that text will not show up. 
So it's literally acting as a guide inside of Flash for me to align other elements to it. So let's do this. I'm going to copy out those selected items. Make sure, whoops, make sure they're selected. I'm going to hit Command C to get them. And I'm going to go inside of the Guns Plus button by double clicking on it. And I'm going to go to the overstate. That's very important. We only want to see the name when we roll over. I'm going to paste in this these text fields and I want to line them up perfectly with the ghosted out versions that are on the page stage. When I'm editing a symbol in place, I can see its relationship to other items on the stage. So for store name, you got it. Guns plus. And for the phone number, we'll just change the last four numbers to one, two, three, four. How creative is that? So now if I test the Swift out, you'll see when I roll over that button, not only do I see the orange state of that shape, but Guns Plus shows up with its fancy phone number. Roll off, and it goes away. No programming. Easy breezy. So let's do the same thing for this guy here. What was he? He was Spatula City. So let's double click on that symbol. I go into that symbol's timeline. I'm editing it in place so I can still see the guide layer in scene one. I'm going to go to the overframe and we'll do a command V to paste in those text fields and we're just going to put them exactly where they should be. And now we'll say this is going to be spat chula city. Uh, and let's say that the last four numbers are going to be 0987. All right, and now we test this out, Spatula City, Guns Plus. Notice how they're in the exact same place. Everything's wonderful. All right, guys, I'm going to shut it down. So I only made two buttons for you, but as you can see, um, do the same steps, and you can in no time have all your um, elements be interactive. And again, no action script at all, and it just works. Now, there are some downsides to this method. If you ever need to change around where that text is going to display, you will have to change every symbol in your library and get really frustrating. But for something like this, you just want to get it done quick and dirty, hey, you got to learn somehow. So have fun with this, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think. All right, guys, take it easy.